I was trying to think of a good thrill ride, and the best I could come up with was a 26-year-old dude has just bought his first car, and he's leaving a community of people that he lived with for five years and is driving completely into the unknown. I was a graduate student at Clark University in Worcester, Massachusetts, and that was a season that it was a buyer's market for academia. And I'd applied for like 70 different places. I got offers from someplace in eastern Louisiana, and I also got an offer at, from Capital Campus, Penn State, Harrisburg. I was the first of my class, first of my, my cohort of doctoral students to actually have a tenure track offer. This is cool, right? Well, I only got it after like circling in over Three Mile Island. This is 1980, the day after, you know, after 1979. So I had to decide then whether it's going to bother me. It's like, it's a job, dude. <laughs> it's a job. So I'm going to go to Penn State at Harrisburg. This is all good, right? Except I have to actually finish my dissertation. I was working full time at uh, Center for Autistic Kids in Boston, which was an eight hour a day job, hour and a half commute either direction. So I finally bought a car. My dad was so proud of me. I'm glad you have a debt now. You can start being an adult. Um, but it was an exhausting summer. I commuted into Boston, work eight hours, commute back and then have between three and six hours of running subjects, analyzing data, and working on my dissertation. Kind of interesting because I put a two by four behind my head after dinner so that you know when you nod, your head would hit it so I wouldn't actually go into deep sleep and I could you know, get three to six hours of work done that night. Whew. I don't think I could ever do that again much older than 26, so you know, it was okay. All right. Summer's over, I have my oral scheduled. It's the day after most of the faculty are getting back from the American Psychological Association, so they're all gonna come. We've got a whole new class of graduate students, so I say, look, why not just everybody come? You'll learn something, and I'll have the experience I think I need to have before I leave. My department chair at a party around his pool and one of my favorite mentors, a guy that I'd gotten stoned with a couple of times, he was younger, he'd written a few books, and he said, what do you want me to ask you? And I said, ask me something hard. I need a crucible experience. It has to be something that I have to, a barrier that I have to get through. He said, okay, dude, fine. Well, a doctoral oral is three hours long. First hour is methodological, it's about all your design and so forth, and nobody knows it better than you do, so you're fine with that. Second hour, it gets more serious. I get a question by this curmudgeon who, whose guts I hated for five years there, and he's asked me this long-winded question that goes on for hours. Well, okay, 10 minutes. He gets to the end of it and I say, look, more, do you want me to ask the question you ended up with or the question you started with? Thankfully, one of my readers says, yeah, Morty, we don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, I answered the question, and then my, my buddy asked me his question. <laughs> and I know this is perfect. I say, well, my data does not speak to that question, which means I'm home free now. It's time to speculate. I can talk about whatever I want. They want to hear how I think. So I had a blast for the last hour. I'm getting, you know, first year students ask me questions, everyone asks me questions. And I remember after being congratulated, sliding down the banister of like two levels of stairs to get out. Well, I go home, pack up my car. I sent 12 boxes of books <laughs> addressed to um, Penn State slash Capital Capital campus was C-A-P-I-T-O-L that ended up at the state capitol building. <laughs> but, but I've got, you know, a, a card table, chairs, my bike, you know, a cot that I'm going to sleep on when I finally get down to, you know, Harrisburg. And, and it's a long drive. I discover the McDonald's at uh, 
Port Jervis, which becomes a stop-off point for like years and years afterwards. But then, you know, what is there between like Wilkesbury and Lebanon? <laughs> there really isn't jack shit. I'm sorry, it, it, there still isn't. And <laughs> I wasn't paying a lot of attention, and I noticed my my gas gauge is on empty, and it might have been that way for a while. So I get off the road to look for a gas station. <coughs> my car stops. I've run out of gas on my way down. Okay. It's 1980. You can still stick your thumb out and get a ride somewhere. I get a ride about a you know, mile away to a service station, get my gallon of plastic gas, and then drive back and fill up my car. But I don't get down to Middletown, Pennsylvania until it's almost dusk. I'm sight unseen, rented a department in Pineford, which I was told was the Ellis Island of new Penn State faculty members there. <laughs> Had to track down the person for my key, finally do that. It's like it's dark out at this point. I'm going to, you know, I unpack everything, and then it's like, it's vacant. There's nothing there. So I decide I'm going to go find my cheers. So I head toward Harrisburg, through Middletown, through High Spire, into Steelton. I don't find cheers. I find the Star Wars bar scene. People staring at me. I mean, I got out of there. This sucks. I stop at the side of a road at an overpass and look out over the ruin of Bethlehem Steel in Steelton. And I'm going, you've just managed the biggest accomplishment of your life. And it's do not pass go, do not collect your $200, you are in hell. So I call my dad who's been through his own hells and he says, look, it never is as bad as it looks but I feel his pride in me. And I make it to my first meeting the next day. Things evolve. I love living in Pennsylvania now. I've been here for like 40 some years, for God's sake. And I remember about 10 years after he died, being president of my primary identity organization, walking down the front deck of the Oceanic Hotel at a conference at Star Island, New Hampshire, feeling my father's eyes looking through mine and I feel his gait in mine. His pride got me through. <laughs>